Hello everybody, welcome to the Sound Test Room, where today we're going to take a look at Zillidrome, uh, Zillidrome. It's like a groove generator, an all-in-one kind of page thing. There are a few different things going on here. So you have six things, basically, to play with. A bass drum, a snare drum, a hi-hat, two kind of synthesizer drone generator type things, and, and this keyboard here, which is a sampler. Okay, so <clears throat> ignore this down here. Okay, but first of all, we're just going to go through it step by step. But I will say that you, your mixer for your instruments, all your instruments, your three mixers here, and you have this, this, and this mixer here. Okay, so it's all a bit spread out, but it makes it kind of makes sense when you get into it. Okay, so this little thing here is my Zoom uh, that's uh, for the iPad, and it's accessible uh, from um, accessibility in settings. Okay, so first of all, we'll just have a look. You get, for your snares um, here, you can choose between hi-hat and snare this side. Just show you there again, see, in this corner. You have uh, all these different snares. Okay, and you can sample it. You can easily sample them just by hitting on the pad there. But you have a hundred of these, see, you can just scroll through this way. Or you can go backwards and you'll see 91 to 99 there. So that's how you select your snare sound for a start off. Okay, exactly the same with the hi-hat. You just choose the hi-hat you want by sampling it there. And you have 100 of those as well. I mean, some of them are toms and they've got splashes and rides and different things. Okay, so you have lots and lots of different options there. Just a little bit hard to see if you're not using uh, the zoom control. Uh, then there's your mixer, mixers for the two items. And then if we go over here... You will see for the kick, you have the same thing. You have up to 99 different kick drums. Let me just go backwards and forwards there like that through them. And we find one that we like. And then you select. You select it. So kick one, for instance. You select kick one. So we've got we've got all everything selected on first, uh, first thing just to get going. Okay, so we can get rid of that a sec. Now you can, there's several ways you can input sound here. So we've got... That one I'm not keen on that one, so we've got that one there. Let's switch that off a sec. Okay, that's fine. Now we can either hit this little record and kind of record it in, or we can use this step sequencer to add add our add our things in like this. So for instance, I think that might be the kick, maybe. Got it go all the way long and no, that's a hi hat. So do we? One of them will be kick. That's a snare. The last one. Okay. So let's just stop that and go back to the beginning. We'll take that out a sec. So there's our kick drum. Now we can enter these like we would normally a, a sequencer. So for every fourth one, we could just put in a drum, and they're slightly different. They're slightly highlighted. The 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 the, the uh, blocks here, so you can put them in. So you, now we'll just have a basic four going, and we can still choose choose which one we want to use. Okay, so let's just stop that a sec. Now, also, <clears throat> there is another way to input notes on the sequencer, and this works for the hi hat, but only for this sequence here that we're working on at the moment, which is the drums. So, say for instance, we didn't want it, we wanted to clear all that. Well, instead of just pressing on each one like that and clearing it, we can press on the one in the first four beats of that first four bar there, and then just hold this little button here, and you see it will highlight the first four, and then you just swipe to the right and it will take them out <clears throat> or alternatively to put it in you put one in like that hold it and swipe to the right again and it will fill in the gaps like that okay so remember we just want to take them out now and and it will work for like if you're doing that one like this all right so now we take them out okay it's just quicker it's a lot quicker than 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 what it also if we just hit it once here it will randomize, see, random, random, random. Oh, we can swipe to there. That's another way of getting rid of it as well. We can swipe to the left like that and it will fill them all in and then 
No, it doesn't do it my way. It's better. Okay. Cleared it like that. So for a hi-hat, for instance, it would be nice if we had it on eighths, and that will give us eights like that. So we've got low. So and for the kick drum, um, we'll just sit on the first, like that. So we've got like... And then for the snare, uh, for the snare, we, can, we it's not easiest way to do that. So we want to do it every every other one like that. So we have like a basic basic beat going sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> there we have a basic beat. And then we can control our. Sorry, we can control our mix here, like that, or change out our sounds, or we can mute or unmute. So you get a basic idea of the, 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 the drums. Okay, so you can also add this kind of a, a swingy, kind of jazzy, shuffly feel by hitting this little button here, which affects uh, mainly just the hi-hats. And there are other things to do if you just do like that. with bass. That's one way to trigger sounds as well. And there's also this little circular motion that's you do at the top, which will do this. And this. A little bit tricky to get a hang of. Now you can record. Okay, so you can record uh, your drums in as well. So if we hit this little record here, see it'll put them in, and you can also do it like that, and it records them in. But it won't. Re it won't record in the the glitchy effect. Okay. So let's leave it at that. And then uh, obviously while it's playing we can you can do that. Now this I'm not quite sure I'm not quite sure what that's doing. It's kind of like altering the pitch of uh, the bass drum. So you could combine the two there, so... Okay, so... That's that. So you basically get an idea of how the, 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 the drums work there. But let's just go on to hi-hat a moment, right? And that's another cool thing, which is good with hi-hats. If we just fill in all the gaps... Okay, so we've got uh, 16 to go in here. And let's mute the bass drum and kick drum. If you hit this little this little button here, uh, let's go over and I'll show you. If we hit this little button here, what will happen then is it will shuffle through. It will shuffle through the hi hats and samples on this particular page that we're on. Okay, so if I, for instance, start playing and then just hit this, you'll see what happens. It shuffles through all those different samples, giving even further variation to your drum pattern. Now the way to stop this, right, is you can't, it's not, you don't hit it again, but you touch one of the pads. Okay. So you get the idea of how that works. <clears throat> right, so that basically kind of covers the drums, except for one thing I want to show you as well before we go any further here. If I just move my zoom control, actually I'll use the zoom control and I'll just move it down here. Here 
we have um, sort of a. Let me just. There we go. That's at the bottom. Now here you have your delay controls. Okay, your synchronized delay. So we can get rid of that. So down here are your synchronized delay. And you can select any of your six instruments here. I don't know if you can see, but any of your six instruments here to be affected by the synchronized delay. So what we'll do is we'll have the snare drum affected by the delay. Then we'll see what happens there. So we'll, let's just play our pattern again. And select our... Let me just see. It's really hard to see. There we go. So you select our snare drum there, and we've got at the moment on this first one here, and then we, and then we can control the feedback as well. You can do that for any of the instruments. Let's just leave that off a sec. Put that up there for a minute. Okay, so your, your other effects now. We'll go through the other effects. You have here uh, six effects, okay, uh, excluding delay, which is all controlled from here. So your first one here is distortion, and then you have a looper, and then you have a reverb. And over here you have a pitch shifter, a wah, 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 and a ring modulator. All these co uh, are controllable by your XY thing here, or you can automate them too, which is good. And again, you select what you want to affect uh, by these little buttons along the top that represent the instrument icons. Okay, so... For instance, let's let's now uh, record a little bit of keyboardy thing. So it's to show you how simple this is. Now moving on to the keyboard here, you have your sounds for your keyboard are here. There they are there, and you again you have a hundred of them going to the end there. So you have different ones. So you can select say piano or organ, guitar. I'm not going to go through all the sounds, obviously. You choose one that you like. That's okay, we'll use that one. Or this one. This one. And these are samples and arrears. A way to get your own samples in, apparently. But I haven't got that far yet, so, you know. So we'll just leave it on. We'll leave it on that one. So that's how you select your samples, anyway. Now, you'll see that this is highlighted like this you it basically records as it plays so it's it's pretty simple so we start back at the beginning let's play uh, a little something let's go let's go through once and then we can swap out our sounds so let's leave it on that a sec and let's apply some now we could apply some delay here What we're going to do is we're going to select pitch shift there, there, and here is the level. We can take that down, or we can apply a wah wah. Ring modulator. Just leave it on pitch shifter. Now to automate 
to automate that you just double tap on this little little uh, icon and there it goes and that can be done for any of the instruments so if I was to select hi-hats now that would be pitch shifted and automated Take the snare and the drums. Sorry, to stop the automation from running, you just hold and it'll stop. Okay, so I'd like to have a little bit more look at the keyboard thing. So, okay, so. For instance, we don't like that. Well, we can erase it straight away just by hitting this next one and it's gone. And we can select a different sound and record something else. Okay, and then we can randomize. Shuffle through the samples on that particular page. Now let's let's just mute that a second, fill in some more. The shuffle will shuffle through the samples. And this will like cause a stutter effect over the whole thing. So every single step will play regardless of what's in it. And we can randomize. Good, let's clear that. And the volume for that is there. So, <laughs> right, you're with me still. Okay. So, for instance, at this point now, I'm thinking, well, I quite like that. It's okay. It's cool. Before I start going on to the what's it's. So I just want, I would like that for to be my first pattern. So this here, this switch here is your pattern, your pattern control. Okay. Your, this is where you control your patterns. So the first thing to do to store that pattern is hit this one here. Okay. And then just touch that once and it's done. Okay, so that pattern is now stored. Okay, so we can go back to keyboard now and let's uh, add add some. Okay, let's just put that in. And that's the second pattern I want. So, there, there, and that. Now we can go to our drums. And we can do this. Now I'm not 100% sure of everything that this does now, but you can program song length and stuff like that as well also. But I haven't, you know, gone into complete total detail. I just wanted to take long enough to show you how to actually get the thing running and working good. Okay, so now we've covered keyboard basically. You can, you can see what you can do with these little buttons here. You can see how you swap your samples out and stuff like that. Also, for instance, if we wanted to do this... I want to say that is a new pattern. Okay. 
Okay, so you get the idea of how that works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the two synths, right? So the two, th there's two synthesizers here, this one and this one. All right, and you're not going to be able to play those actually without actually triggering something. So we're going to just trigger some notes in the first one. Okay, and press play. And I'm going to mute the drums. Okay, so you hear it plays there. You can hit some random ones. And you can use this X, Y to play it like this. So we get a sound. That kind of does the same thing, it'll tr trigger all of them. And we get the sound we like. By playing with it. And then what we can also do, which is cool, is we can hit this little button here and we can automate any of these parameters now. just leave that playing like this or we could switch the automation off also this little yeah that's pitch but this plays it more more like a keyboard type thing and then to trigger the next synth here we can put some in the gaps that are missing there actually that might be fun and then play that So you get that how that works and again you can apply effects delay depending on which icon you select so you can make all that echo now here's another cool thing as well um if we set if we let's let's make it sort of more basic than that let's just play Let's turn down the second synth. So yeah, that's kind of it. That's just kind of a, just a basic sine wave, isn't it? If we hit this little button now and then press one, sorry. Okay, so now I've programmed that into, into channel one. So let's do, put that into two so one two and then we can do another one now for three and let's do another one for four so now we have Okay, so now here's another great thing here. Along the bottom here, you can see these little these little squares. If we hit this here, it brings us up this block here. Now at the moment, all these lights are on, and that means that they're um, they're switched off basically. But if we hit this first, sorry, we won't want to switch it off. We hit the first one here. You'll see a little one appear. So what I can do is I can program the sequencer here to swap through my programmed patterns uh, any way I like. So we could have the first four on, the first bar, if you like, on uh, one. And then we can go to two. And then three. And then finish on four. But we also have, don't forget, also a fifth one. So we can random in or we can mute out parts as well. So... 
the little switch, the little play button next to it, what that does is activates, activates our sequence. So it'll just play like this for normal. And then if I press this. Again, I can go through the same thing for this one. So let's go to reverb, select our first one. like a stutter it'll stutter exactly where you stop it so there you go so we have our tempo control at the bottom so now we're nearly getting there nearly getting there you're getting a good idea of how you can build up these things, construct uh, what it's. <clears throat> At this point now, uh, I think I, what I shall do is save as, um, I don't know, loop, uh, loop test. Oh, sugar. <laughs> loop test. Did it save? No, it didn't. Okay, save as, because I press cancel instead. Loop test, save. And it's done. And then after that, we can just save product as we go. So, for instance, we've got now, if we go to our sequencer, we can play this. Now, all that other stuff that I just set up with the synth is, is lost now because I didn't save it, but you'll get you get the idea. Save it into new patterns if you want to keep it, stuff like that. So anyway, that covers that. Now, the other thing is here, let's see, I think I've gone through basically, I've gone through the delays, gone through how the effects work. There's this like a looper thing. Now, this will capture uh, live audio, what's playing, and make a loop out of it sort of thing. And we could again choose to loop whatever we like. So let's choose the, the synth there to loop and let's just play. And that's a section that we capture. And double tap on it. that works that will cap that works for anything so for instance we could capture the snare cool so that's how you've seen how the reverb works distortion is really self-explanatory we distort the snare. And again, it would all be remembered if we then went like this, hit it onto number four, so then we'd have our other things recorded. So pretty much, I think I've pretty much gone through, gone through nearly everything here, except for uh, this thing here. 
this is your mixer kind of thing for everything so we've now sent the snare over there uh, a stereo spread And these are just the delay sends for the various instruments, you know, for your for your delay there. Um, like, say, for instance, we wanted to send a delay to the, our snare drum. Okay. get that so you can understand and it's the same the delay sends as well also for the effects okay and you have also various presets that they've put in sort of thing okay so you can see you can get quite deep and again also after that you want to you might want to um like i said just jump out of there hit sorry jump out of there hit this one and save another save another pattern so <clears throat> yeah and there's also like it says there is i'm not sure what that does and there is like a, a, a there is like a, a song mode type thing somewhere as well where you can control how, when these patterns will trigger how many times you want them to play before they trigger and blah 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 okay so basically guys i think that, that's most of uh, uh zilla drone i think you'll agree that it's pretty pretty cool and it's pretty deep as well but and also pretty straightforward once you understand how it works you know you can really go mental or you can go quite simple and keep it quite straightforward uh, in settings here there is midi control here for different things i haven't tried anything with midi yet you know because i'm a midi yet. um background audio on and off i don't think it's audio bus compatible yet or interrupt audio i'm not 100 percent, but i don't think so um let's move my zoom thing out of the way so pretty much that's it yeah you know you get some um some demo projects here you can you can put in and then you can just uh, hit load somewhere, I would have think. Open project. I don't know how you do that, actually. Look like that. There it is, Zilly Drone in half an hour. <laughs> All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you find it useful. A bit way more to understand than how it actually works and that. But you can imagine, you can dig really deep and you could produce some great stuff with this. And proper, ordinary sounding stuff, not sort of mental. You could just, you know, do it quite quite straightforward, you know, and still get it to sound interesting. And I think it's built for a lot of live performance type things, so it's cool like that as well. There is a, there is, um, a record... Uh, see, you can have samples, load samples, or export, record. So I'm not sure where it exports to. Let's see. Not sure. Well, without recording it, I don't know. But it tells you you can record X amount of loops there. So probably exports to iTunes or something like that. So, all right, guys. hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, if uh, anyone's got any ideas they want to see, like, see happen to the soundtestroom.com, let us know. We've got some big, big things planned real soon all right guys i'll uh, see you later